Shalom, shalom. Before I get started, as always, I want to give all praise to our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha HaKodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And salutation and blessings to the hopeful elect that are scattered throughout the four winds of the earth that believe wholeheartedly in the true doctrine that is being pushed throughout the four winds of the earth who are in hope of mercy and salvation. All right, during the time of Jacob's trouble, as well as when Yahweh Shai returns to the planet Earth. All right, um, as you can see in the video or in the title, uh, Jake describes hell. All right, Jake describes going to hell. All right, and as you see to the left of the screen, um, I have a video queued up. Of the Jake, who's a uh, a gang member, all right, um, out here in uh, on the West Coast, uh, in particular uh, Los Angeles, and he's given his account of when he was shot and what had happened to him, all right. And the the main point that I want to get from that I'm playing this is because he said he woke up in hell. You know what I'm saying? He said he woke up and he, he, he was in hell. And where, where hell was, it wasn't a place where you burn forever. The devil wasn't down there with a pitchfork. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I remember years ago, um, I believe it was the, the Comfy group. Yeah, it was Comfy in them. Uh, they were saying that uh, you 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 gonna die, go to hell, and uh, uh, Satan pop you. You know, you getting popped by Satan. You know, on some on some weirdo uh, uh, BS. Okay, and this is a video. You know, concerning do you burn in hell? Which no, we don't burn in hell once we die. All right, that's clear in the scriptures. But you got a lot of these Israelite groups. All right, that's uh, the main group that's pushing that is the IUIC. All right, they pushing that you're going to burn in hell after you die. All right, which that's a false uh, doc. That's a false doctrine. Okay, that's not true. It's not scriptural. All right. So without any further ado, I'm going to uh, play this video and I'm going to react to it. Stop it in the interject and pull some scriptures. All right, but keep in mind what he says where he where where hell was. All right, and I'm gonna uh, more than likely pull up a video to show you where hell was. Okay, let's go. So I, I died right here. I lay right there. I was just looking at my cousin and the homies right here. They were standing over me and shit, trying to tell me to breathe. And I was looking at him, thinking in my head, like, nigga, I can't fucking breathe. You hear me? Like, they all standing there, like, just breathe, fight it, fight it, fight it. I'm like, looking at these niggas, like, bro. And then when I tried to breathe, I feel like I was gonna kill myself faster. So I just stopped. I was just like, I'm gonna just lay here and die. You feel me? Like, fuck it. I lay here. I didn't even know that my homegirl was even here. I didn't even know she got even shot. I just know I got shot. I, just, I thought I got hit in the head or something. I just heard a shot and I just do like phew, my whole body just like froze up and shit and I just fell back and I hit my head right here right here like and then it was dead weight so it's like all concrete hit my head so I had a, a, a seizure a stroke all kind of shit man I actually woke up in the hospital and shit but I went through some some afterlife shit though I talked to God one time I don't know if it was God or not but it felt like God he was telling me and shit the way I was living was wrong and shit and that I should change my ways and shit. Right, because the way he was living is is uh, the gang bang, the gang life culture, so called culture. All right, um, which matter of fact, let's put, bring in the scripture. All right, which ultimately is the curses. All right, to where um, we kill one another. The only people on the planet Earth that kill one another for sport. Well, not for sport, but for, for, for silly reasons, all right, are the Israelites, okay? Um, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 54, it says, So that man, so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, 
his eyes shall be evil toward his brother in the gang culture uh lifestyle um especially here um southern california um the the main reason they they kill each other is uh neighborhoods different neighborhoods different sets you know what i'm saying the red the blue the purple the burgundy all right um gang you know and they all are the same people you don't see this amongst no other nation all right and this is the type of lifestyle the leader of the sakari tries to uh bring into this truth all right this is a degenerate lifestyle this is a, a demonic lifestyle this is a, a a hellish lifestyle all right to try to marry with the truth okay so it says, so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. All right. And all that you could throw gang banging right into that. All right. Because it's rare. Um, to. Uh, you know, for you to live this lifestyle and. And. And, and, and come out unscathed with a whole family, kids and all. No. All right. I remember my father told me years ago. Because my father was a, uh, he was a career gangster. He didn't stop gangbanging until he was 36 years old behind bars. All right. And became Muslim. All right. But um, he told me years ago. Uh, it's only two two ways two this 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 lifestyle was a two-way street either the penitentiary or the grave all right and that's exactly what it leads to and this falls into the curses all right matter of fact there's another scripture um what is that in blood touch of blood let me get that real quick and this is that lifestyle yeah hosea 4 i knew it was Let's go there. Uh, Hosea 4 and 1. It says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. All right? Okay? Now, uh, uh, when this was written, written, this was talking about then when we were in our land. All right. <clears throat> it says, uh, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of the most high in the land. All right. And you can't tell me a nigga that gangbang has the knowledge of the heavenly father. All right. He, you heard what he said. He said, you know, I, 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 I talked to God one time. Well, I think it was God. And he was telling me the life that I was living wasn't right and shit. All right. Verse verse two. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing. That's the gangbang lifestyle. All right. And committing adultery. All right. They break out and blood touches blood. And that's what happened to him. All right. He got hit. All right. He caught one. And, and, and uh had a, a, a out of body experience so to speak okay so let's get back and listen to what more of he, what more he says all right so and and after him telling me that i feel like he sent me to hell to see what it was like he said i felt like i feel like he sent me to hell to see what it was like all right Where's hell at? Let's see. Because after that, I feel like I woke up in hell. Because when I woke up after that, I woke up in the Nickerson Gardens. He and said, after that, I feel like I woke up in hell. And when I woke up, I woke up in the Nickerson Gardens. Let me show you what the Nickerson Gardens is. All right. This is a housing project in Watts, uh, California, which is a part of Los Angeles County, but a small city. Uh, on the east side of the uh, 110 freeway. All right. Let me go to my history because I got it on here. 
He said, he said, I felt like he sent me to hell, right? Where is it at? I might have passed it. Let me see. Yeah, this is it here. Nickerson Gardens, all right? Now, I ain't going to play the whole 12 minutes, but I'm going to just show you. This is where he ended up at. They call me Gino. This is where he ended up at. All right. He said he, he sent me to hell and I woke up in hell and where I was at, I was in the Nickerson Gardens. The Nickerson Gardens is a a, a housing project um, in the uh, Watts area of the uh, Los Angeles County. Uh which the gang there is the uh, Bounty Hunter uh, uh, Watts Bloods, all right? So just peep this. This is where he said he was at, all right? He woke up in the Nickerson Gardens. This was hell, okay? They call me Gino from Bunny Hunter, Fala and Charlotte. Get with it to get lost. Bunny on the east side, bunny on the west. You already know what it is. Man, he let me, he let me do my love. He out here eating us. Look at him. 115 Street though. That's what we, yeah, you know for me. That's how he jump out on black people. Y'all don't jump out on whites and Mexicans like that. It's everything they did, separating our families, taking all our true religion, our history from us, taking everything from us. Our last names. They took everything from us. And then said we got a fucking fair shot. How the fuck we got a fair shot? What you doing? I can't get no money, brother. I follow up. Episode. And this is this is the hell. All right. Today we back in the bounty. Last time we was out here in the Nickerson Gardens, there was a lot going on. Which that's pretty much it. I mean, you could you could type this in and check out how fucking fucked up the living conditions is and. You know, the little gremlins and even the old heads out here. All right. Just a condition of of hellish conditions. Loss. Our people are lost and in hellish conditions, killing one another. This is where he said he, he ended up. All right. Now, let's listen to a little more. In your dreams. In my dreams. I woke up in the niggas in gardens. I don't know who these two niggas was that was in the fucking room with me. I think they was demons. You feel me? But and that's they and were. they are demons in human form. All right, these little niggas that like going back to this video. You watch this. Matter of fact, let me see. When you watch this video, not in no blood. We go off the heart. Not these the whole, demons. Not the whole bang out right here. That's like my name. Boy, nigga, what's going through it? It's been about a year, some change since we've been back. These are demons. You know, they tell you I'm from what. About like a year, a year and a half ago. I don't remember. Yeah, I ain't cap. I've been booming. I've been fucking. These are demons, man. They got demons on them. All right? A bunch of lost souls. Okay? Let me see. The gangbang lifestyle puts demons on you, man. Okay? This is a it's a it's a heavy spell. That's been put on Jake, man, out here on the West. And then this shit is uh, uh, traveled throughout all of the United States. All right. So it's so heavy that you got one of the leaders of the Israelite groups, uh, uh, Sakari, uh, Chief Priest uh, Alazar. All right. He's trying to mingle this gangbang shit with the truth. All right. That's how heavy this demon is. All right, this this spirit, this gang banging demon. All right, it comes with a demonic spirit, and that's why he said he didn't know who these two niggas was, but he felt like they was demons because they were demons. All right, when you indulge in this type of lifestyle, all right, you surrounded by demons. Okay, let's listen some more. Salaki. Happened to me. You feel me? They was telling me we we don't go back and get the nigga who shot you. All right, so they like telling me, we're going to get the guns, we're going to get this shit, we're going to get that, we're going to go kill the nigga who shot you. I'm like, all right, you feel me? So they take me to go through the shit. Give me the gun, take me to the place. 
We pull up at some house. I don't know where the fuck shit is. There was a house, a nigga standing outside. It was like, nigga right there, shoot him. I lean out the car. I try to shoot. I can't fire no weapon, no bullets. You feel me? I was like trying to shoot. So I'm like, what the fuck? They looking at me like, nigga, shoot. Nigga, shoot. So I'm like, I'm trying to, you feel me? So they speed off. Woo. Go back to the spot. So we get out and shit. And they, they take me to the little in the back and shit. They looking at me like, nigga. You didn't do your shit and whoop de whoop 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 nigga and I'm like man like I tried to they was like nigga no you didn't nigga we had when they was like I told him the gun didn't shoot the nigga took the gun that he gave me he shot the motherfucker in the house like bah! you feel me he was like why you shoot now I'm like man I don't fucking know I tried to shoot the shit it wouldn't shoot they was like listening to me like all right all right next thing you know these niggas bum rushing. <laughs> They didn't sock me, they like pushed me to the ground and shit, like wrestled me down, you feel me? So they wrestled me down, one nigga put his knee on my like, my, my leg and shit like that, and the other nigga like grabbed my foot, he bent my foot back, and the nigga had like a crack razor type shit. Nigga took the razor, cut my motherfucking foot from the, from the like this part all the way to the back with the razor, like, <sighs> cut. Took, took the razor, cut his foot from the front all the way to the back. All right, what does that remind you of? That reminds you of the scripture in the book of Genesis. He shall, uh, uh, thou shalt bruise his head and he shall bruise thy heel. Okay? As long as Jake is into this uh, bullshit ass lifestyle, that's what's going to happen. All right? Now, mind you, this is a place where he he, he was uh, having a, like a, a out of body slash of, a dream uh, experience. Okay? It says, Genesis 3 and 15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right? And that's what happened. That's that's what he's speaking about. He, his, the heel is bruised. Us as a people. All right? You get, you get a foot injury, you through. You can't run. You can't walk. All right? Uh... What's, what's your heel attached to? Your heel is attached to your Achilles. But if you get cut on the bottom of your foot with a with like a, a razor, he said a crack razor, you know how deep that, that gash is going to go? You ain't finna walk on that foot. All right? You ain't finna walk on that foot. So this is a part of the curses, the hell. All right? This is the hell. All right? Hell is not a place where you burn forever. Hell is a condition played out on the planet earth and also when it go when it comes to the definitions all right when you look at the word shower wall all right it's 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 the grave and when you look at uh 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 uh, uh gehenna it's it's the it goes back to the valley of Hinnom, all right where they burn trash but ultimately it's the grave slash condition uh played out in the earth uh, case in point, Jonah. All right. Jonah was in the belly of hell, right? But he was still alive. All right. Jonah chapter 2, verse 2. And he said, I cried by reason of mine affliction. All right. Unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardest my voice. All right. Now, when you when we listen to a little more, he going to tell you. He was hollering, all right? He wasn't hollering because he was burning. He was hollering because he got his foot cut by two niggas that took him to kill another Israelite that shot him, all right? And because his the gun didn't work, they cut the bottom of his foot, okay? Hell, uh, 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 hell is conditions, man. Shit, so the whole time for that, I was hollering like, oh, oh, this nigga cut my foot. And in the dream, this shit was real. I was really bleeding this shit. And I was like, this nigga cut my fucking foot with the fucking crack razors. You feel me? And I'm like, nigga, I tried to do my shit. You feel me? So they like, all right. So they take me. So they say, we're going to go meet the big homie. This is the craziest part of my shit, right? They talking about we want to be some other big homie. I thought these niggas was some big homies or whatever. You feel me? So we go to the hospital. 
I'm thinking like, what the fuck we in the hospital for? Long story short, the big homie is my auntie. She don't got shit to do with gang ties, nothing. You feel me? So it was the craziest part of how the fuck she the big homie. You feel me? Like, it was crazy. See, because our people, even if if even if they not indulging in that lifestyle, they still not uh, following your how about Shimmy I was shy, all right? They still, they in hell, all right? Which ultimately is, is the curses that was put on us. We all in hell. Hey, she the big homie and shit, so she, they come in there, so I'm thinking my auntie gonna take my side, you feel me? These niggas done cut my foot with a motherfucking crack razor, auntie. You the big homie, you need to DP these niggas or something. Like, she on these niggas' side. Nah, no, hold on, nigga, you didn't do your shit. Nah, no, nah, no, nigga. Nah, nigga, she like, so what happened? They tell her what happened. She like, well, he didn't do nothing. Nah, he didn't get it right. All right. So they like, she like, take him again and shit. So she tell me, you make sure you gonna do it this time. So I'm really looking at my auntie like, damn, when did you get like this? Like, like what the fuck? Like, you feel me? So I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm ready. You feel me? They long story short, they give me the guns. We go again at some other place. I don't know where the fuck it's at, but the niggas outside. Same shit. Shoot the nigga. Same shit happened. Lean out the window, try to shoot, shit don't fire. So I'm like, damn. They take me back. My auntie, she was like, man, you didn't shoot again. I'm like, man, I'll try. I'm trying to plead with her. Like, man, auntie, you know I'm a gangster. Like, man, what the fuck? I tried to shoot the motherfucker. Like, man, I swear I did. Like, she like, man, gave them niggas the signal. They start fucking me up again. <laughs> they punching me this time. <laughs> Beat me up and shit. So I'm like, God damn, you feel me? So I went through all that shit. And after that, I really woke up in the hospital to where it wasn't no more dreams. So I felt like God. Hold up real quick. Let me look up this word hell here. Okay. The word hell. Again, like the Hebrew word, Sha'awal. All right. It ain't no underworld. All right. It's the grave. The pit, all right, place of no return without praise of God. Ain't no place where the wicked are sent for punishment. In a sense, uh, on the planet Earth, sent for punishment because our judgment was to to be in 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 hellish conditions. Okay, for what? For breaking for breaking the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh by Shemuel As a matter of fact, let me get that in uh, Ecclesiastes. Three, uh, not a classical, but Ecclesiastes, as it tells us that uh, I saw a place under the sun. Where's that at? <clears throat> it might be the first chapter. Let me let's let's try that. All right, and this is our judgment that we had to come down here and and, and, and uh, play out. All right, Ecclesiastes three, maybe it's oh yeah, three and sixteen. There it is. Uh, Ecclesiastes three and sixteen, and moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment that wickedness was there. And the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there, all right? What's under the sun? The earth. The earth is where you come to play out the judgment the Heavenly Father uh, uh, put on us, all right? And us as a people, we were, our judgment was to live in these hellish conditions under the rule of the so-called white man. This is why he said, uh, he, he sent them to hell and he woke up in the Nickerson Gardens, all right? The environment that he's from, all right? Now, he's, I don't believe he's from uh, the Nickerson Gardens. He's from uh, Fruit Town. Um, but the point is that that environment is the same. It's all the same. Hellish conditions, killing one another, all right? Committing adultery, stealing, all right? And this is the hell that, we, that we're living in, man, all right? There was a video the brothers was talking about. I still haven't seen it. But you had a nigga dig up his enemy, his op, 
so-called Ops Grave, which was another Israelite. And then they caught the nigga. All right. And the niggas, the, the, the spirit was that was on them niggas, they overshot this nigga off his bike. All right. They overshot this nigga off his bike. Made sure that his 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 uh his his funeral was gonna be closed casket. Okay? Made sure of it. Okay. So <clears throat> hell is not a place where you burn forever. Matter of fact, let's go back to the book of Deuteronomy. One. I mean not one. What the hell am I talking about? Uh, Deuteronomy 28, all right? And we're going to go to the 15th verse, all right? The consequences of disobedience. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. To be cursed by the heavenly father is living in hell. All right. Our judgment was not to drink of the cup of the heavenly father, but we have assuredly drunken. All right. So let's listen to a little more. Let me do that shit to show me what heaven was going to be like and what hell was going to be like. He said, you want to go to hell? I feel like he said, they're going to make you do shit they know you can't do. And they're going to beat your ass after you do it. You know I mean? no, they're going to make you do shit they literally know you can't do. And every time they're going to take you knowing you can't do it so they can fuck you up after that. That's what hell is. Just pain and misery. Get pain and misery. All right. Is that not what we have experienced since we've come over here uh, to this side of the earth? And even before we that's all we've been experiencing as a people. And when you read from 15 all the way down to the 68 verse, that's nothing but pain and misery that we have uh, drunk down. Matter of fact, let's get it. They whose judgment was not to drink of the cup. Let's get that. And, you know, Yahweh Shimei Avashai Ratazah, you know, this is making sense. Okay. This is the book of uh, Jeremiah 49 and 12. It says, For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup. All right. What's the cup? Matter of fact, let's get what the cup is in Psalms, the 70, I believe that's Psalm 75. Psalm 75 and. Yeah, Psalm 75 and 8. All right. Matter of fact, we could start at, I'm going to start at uh, 6. All right. Because um, the promotion comes uh, not from the east or the west nor the south, but the most high is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Let me read it. Let me read it right. You know, I'm just, you know, skimming over a little excited. Salakia. Psalm 75 and 6. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But the most high is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. And that's what happened to us. We were put down and, and uh, Esau was set up over us. All right. And we were given the cup of the Lord, which is hell. All right. It says, for in the hand of the Lord, there is a cup. And the wine is red. It is full of mixture, and he poureth out of the same. But the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth, shall wring them out and drink them. All right? So right now, we're drinking the cup. All right? It's full of mixture, meaning all type of uh, uh, hell, chaos, destruction. All right? And we, the Lord made us drink it. All right. But Esau, he's going to drink the, uh, the dregs of it. Now, let's go back to Jeremiah 49 and 12. For thus saith the Lord, behold, the, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup 
have assuredly drunken and art and and art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished thou shall not go unpunished but thou shalt surely drink of it and we we are drinking of the cup as as it is written they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken and we still drinking all right still drinking the cup of the lord all right but the lord is you know since uh he's opened up this knowledge up to us now we understand and know why all right now we understand and know why and now we have that sense of peace within us uh the elect that is two-thirds of our people still don't have a clue all right but the elect all right uh uh have obtained it matter of fact let's get that in the book of uh romans romans 11 Romans 11 and 7, it says, What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. All right? We've obtained the, 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 the secrets of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh We know and understand now why we're in these hellish conditions. All right? Why we get shot down. Why are we going through all the pain and misery? All right? Why we see these nations prospering. Because this is our punishment. This was the judgment. This is the, the, the cup of the Lord that we had to drink. The hellish conditions. All right? We are in hell. Just like Jonah was in uh, the belly of the, uh, uh, the belly of hell. Okay? He was still alive. He wasn't burning. He was just in a position of difficulty. Hellish conditions inside the, 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 the belly of a fish. All right? And you can imagine that the smell and everything was just terrible. He was probably afraid. He didn't know what the hell was going to happen to him. And this is the, the conditions that we are born into when we uh, are drinking the cup of the Lord. When we're born into the planet Earth. Our judgment is to, to drink what the Lord uh, put down on us. Going back to Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 68 verse. All right. That's what it's all about. Hell is not no goddamn place where you burn forever. That's a scare tactic. Okay? If anybody should burn forever, forever it should be Esau, right? No, but it's not Esau. Esau not even going to burn forever. In the hell fire that is talking about in the book of Revelation... And death and hell was cast into the uh, lake of fire. It's talking about uh, uh, the nuclear missiles. And the hell that's cast into the, the, the lake of fire. All right. It's talking about death for the Israelites. We, we will no longer die no more after that. Okay. We will no longer uh, uh, be sent to the, to the grave, the pit. All right. Ass beat all the time and smelling. But that's all I smelled in hell was blood. I don't know why that's why I smelled that. But I didn't even tell you the other part though. He said all he smelled was blood. That's why I read. Well, I, I jumped the gun on it. Uh, Hosea four and uh, two. Okay, they break forth and blood touches blood, and that's what happens, man. That's what happens in Jake's so-called communities, the so-called ghetto. All right, the run down parts of the city. Matter of fact, Deuteronomy says, Cursed shall thou be in the city. All right. Let's get it. Deuteronomy 28 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Meaning, wherever we are on the earth is the field. All right. And that's pursuing the, uh, Matthew the 13th chapter. All right. Uh, the, the, the end of the, the, the harvest, when the angels come to reap, it tells you that the field is the earth. All right. Wherever we are on the planet earth, all right, we're cursed. When we in the cities, we're cursed. And I just showed you a little snippet of uh, the Nickerson Gardens. All right. In, in Watts, California, all right? The 
police is uh, patrolling you. Scriptures say a leopard shall watch over your cities. Okay. Showed you the, the, the ghetto bird hovering right there. Let's see. You can hear the ghetto bird. And I remember that distinctly. I used to live in the uh, city. I used to live deep in the in the city. I didn't live in the downs. I mean, the uh, gardens. But my father's side was from the Jordan Downs, which is in the uh, the same city. All right, just a different gang. All right, but you you hear the ghetto bird nightly in Los Angeles, man. When you in the city, when you down in the city, you hear the ghetto bird every night. All right, the ghetto bird being the helicopter, and you can hear it now. See, a leopard shall watch over thy cities. Matter of fact, let's get there. So these are the hellish conditions that we are uh, subjected to. Let's get that. Uh, what is that? Uh, a leopard shall. Let me try. Let me see. <clears throat> oh, that's not that one. Bear with me. I wrote these scriptures down, but I forgot. Um. The actual precepts. I know I wrote that one down. A leopard shall watch over thy city. Let's try Jeremiah 5. Yep, this is it, Jeremiah 5 and 6. It says, Wherefore, a lion out of the forest shall slay them, okay? And a wolf of the evening shall spoil them. And a leopard shall watch over their cities. Everyone that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces because their transgressions are many and their backslidings are increased. So this is, this is the type of conditions we have to live under because our transgressions and our innumerable amount of backslidings all right these jacked up ass conditions that we are put in all right here in babylon the great because we disobeyed yahweh by shimmy i was and that you hear this jake here at the end at the beginning and to everything they did separating our families taking all our true religion our history from us taking everything from us our last names, they took everything from them. And then say we got a fucking fair shot. How the fuck we got a fair shot? Which See? He he that's that's him uh groaning of the hellish conditions that uh uh Jake is placed in. Alright. So you, you ain't no reason for you to be believing in hell in 2024. Alright? Ain't no reason. Uh, about the hell part. The last mission. He he left something out about the hell part, and we're gonna listen to what he says. Cause it was crazy how this is the ending type shit. The last dream I had uh, in the hospital. That's what hell is. This pain and misery, getting your ass beat all the time, and smelling. But that's all I smelled in hell was blood. I don't know why that's what I smelled that. But I didn't even tell you the other part that was uh, about the hell part. The last mission, uh, cause it was crazy how this was the ending type shit. The last dream I had uh, in the hospital was a little devil shit. Uh, I was with these niggas. They said the same shit. We're gonna kill the nigga who shot you. I'm like, okay. So it's some other type hitman type niggas now. These niggas got like a Rolls Royce and shit and suits on and shit. So I'm like, these niggas some type of killers type motherfuckers. You feel me? So I'm like, they they could for sure get this nigga. You feel me? So I'm like, all right, you feel me? So we get in. I get in. The, I'm in the car with these niggas. So we pull up at like a McDonald's or something, and like this big ass bodyguard nigga, he jumped out the car. I couldn't even see his face. This big ass nigga had like all black on, jumped out the car and walked off and shit. But it was some big motherfucker sitting in the front seat. 
against he was the devil. I didn't know he was the devil, I just thought he was some big motherfucker at first. So he telling me, like, yeah, you, you ready to go kill the motherfucker who shot you? So I'm just like, like, man, they keep asking me this shit. I already told y'all, yeah, like, you feel me? Like, so he like, all right, he said, I'm gonna make sure you can do it this time. I'm gonna give you something to help you. So I'm like, I'm like, I guess he know what I've been, you feel me? I guess he know what the fuck I've been going through, you feel me? I can't shoot the motherfucker. Like, so he like, I'm gonna help you. He was like, but hold on, uh, I gotta take my drugs first and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take you over there and I'm, I'm gonna teach you how to do it. So this nigga pulled out like a briefcase, like, like it was crazy as fuck. He whipped out a briefcase. And the motherfucker had like a hospital in the a lot of hospital, like little water shits and the shit, like little little syringes shit, like little doctor shit in the motherfucker, like sharp shit. So I'm literally looking in the back seat, like what the fuck is going on? Like this shit is crazy, you feel me? So the nigga like doing mushroom with the shit, putting shit together and shit, like he like, hold on, I gotta do my shit first, you feel me? Then he took like some sharp ass syringe type shit and stuck it in his chest, like, then he was like, uh, then he turned around and looked at me. When he did that, my whole body was like, Psh. and nigga, he was just staring at me the whole time. My whole body was just shaking, and I could not move the whole time thinking, get out the car. I'm like, nigga, I'm trying to get out the car and everything. My whole body just stuck, and he just stared at me like, and he had like a smirk on his face, and I'm like, bro, I was just like, nigga, get me out of this. I prayed to God and everything. Like, God, get me up out of this shit. After that, I didn't have no more dreams like that, and I, I woke up and had to the actual hospital and shit. He said, uh, uh, I prayed to God after that, I didn't have no more dreams. Uh, and he woke up, you know what I'm saying? And that reminded me of this scripture here in the book of Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter. All right, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, uh, which I believe this is a prayer of Solomon, okay? It says, if my people which are called by, by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land, all right? And the elect is, is, is the only ones who are going to do this, all right? This is why there's only going to be a remnant that makes it. All right. Only a remnant is going to make it. All right. Out of this hell. OK. Because the conditions that we are born into here in Babylon, the great is hell. All right. And majority of our people have just adopted the conditions. All right. They've adopted and accepted them for what they are, you know, and think that that's life. All right. But the condition that we're in is hell. All right. We ain't going to go from living these messed up ass conditions um, to burning forever. All right. When you go to Job, the third chapter, let's get that and we'll get ready to close it. Give me Job 33. I'm in Job 3. Job 3. It tells you that um, when Job said, he said, why died I not? from the womb all right let's get it let me find it i think it's somewhere yep we'll start at 11. job 3 and 11. Why died I not from the womb? Because Job was catching hell. Boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Lost his whole family. Lost all his riches. Job was catching hell. Lost his children. Lost his wife turned on him. And that's the average lifestyle for the Israelite man. No matter what the tribe. All right? We can't escape these curses. This is the hell that we're in. We're in hell. Okay? But this knowledge uh, uh, gives you that rest to understand why we're in this hellish condition. All right? But majority of our people have not obtained uh, what they have seeking, what they seek for, but the election have obtained it. And the rest were blinded. 
The Lord blinded two thirds of our people. All right. And if you believe that hell is a place where you burn forever, then you still blinded. All right. It says, why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? This is Job saying, I'd rather be dead than to go through this shit that I'm going through. Okay. It says, why did the knees prevent me? Or why the beast that should, that I should suck? Oh, oh, uh, the last part he just said, he said, uh, the nigga that was right there, he, he, it was the devil. But he was in the form of just a big ass nigga. Well, when you go back to Job, the first chapter, it tells you that uh, Satan came and he wanted to tempt Job. All right. And that's what he said. Uh, uh, hell is just a, 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 a place where you, you just being tormented, misery, pain. You know what I'm saying? And, and being told to do shit that you know you can't do. All right. Roughly paraphrasing what he said. Because we're constantly being tormented by Satan here, man. All right. Um, verse 12, it says, why did the needs prevent me or why the beasts that I should uh, or why the breasts that I should suck? For now, should I have lain still and been quiet, meaning the stillborn? I should have slept and had been and then. I been in Salaki. Th then had I been at rest, <clears throat> meaning when he died, because when you die, you're at rest. Remember what Samuel told uh, 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 Saul. He said, "Why disquietest me from my rest?" When he conjured up his spirit through that witch. Okay. He said, "With kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves." Meaning at rest. All right. At rest is to be dead. So-called dead. All right. You call it death. But really you're at rest. You're in the spirit realm. All right. Or with princes that had gold. Who filled their houses with silver. Or as hidden untimely birth. I had not been as infants which never saw light. Stillborns. All right. There the wicked cease from troubling. Even the wicked are at rest. They cease from troubling. And there the weary be at rest. All right. The hell that you catch here on the planet Earth. All right. Uh, I had a. Uh, a uh, somebody died close a, a while back. All right. But they were they were in a state of suffering. All right. And. um. Uh, this particular individual, uh, you know, he asked me, you know, you think they, uh, went, I was like, ain't no such thing as hell, man. You know what I'm saying? They, they good now. They, the suffering is over. You know what I'm saying? You saw the suffering, you know, that they were going through, taking all them pills, back pains, couldn't, can't even sleep, they in so much pain, screaming, help me, God, help me, God. But when, when, when that spirit left the body, that was that was it. The suffering is over. All right? The weary be at rest. All right? There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. All right? The small and great are there. And the servant is free from his master. All right? Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery? All right. That ain't that what he said, pain and misery? Okay? And life unto the bitter in soul. All right? Which long for death, but it cometh not, and dig for it more than for hid treasures. All right? Because uh uh death is 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 better than a life of suffering and misery. When you understand death, all right, because death is when you're at rest. You're in the spirit world. OK. And only the heavenly father has power over uh, life and death. OK. I just had a, uh, one of my coaches from high school. One of my partners from the world called me. He all in distraught and 
Can you believe? You know, he all. Can you believe that? I can't really talk to him like that because he don't understand. He all messed up, and you know, I'm like, man, he good now. And I could tell he, uh, speaking of my coach from from back in the day, he was suffering. I know he had all type of diseases going on because he had put on a whole bunch of weight. You know, had put on a whole bunch of weight. You know, probably had diabetes, was taking, you know, maybe high blood pressure pills, catching all kind of hell in the flesh. All right. Now, he, he died young. He wasn't no old man, but, you know, he was mid-50s, uh, 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 you know, mid-50s, early 50s, mid-50s. You know what I'm saying? But he was, I'm sure he was catching hell with all the weight that he had put on, man. You know, I didn't really know. For sure, but I'm sure of it, you know, given the knowledge and everything that the Lord has, you know, blessed us with to know, you know, and he's an Israelite. You know, you know, the average Jake that get up to 50 going into his 60s, man, he's in a world full of pain, you know, world full of agony because his whole life he didn't been eating all type of unlawful foods. And and now the health issues are kicking in and, you know, catching hell, you know. So, you know, that's pretty much it, man. I just wanted to, you know, when I saw this, I was like, yo, you know, that, that, that's, a, uh, you know, the way he put it, you know, he ended up in the Nickerson Gardens. He ended up in hellish conditions, and that was hell. And every, everything around him was uh, the product of, of those hellish conditions. Niggas are demons. His, even his auntie. All right, that wasn't even uh, a part of, uh, you know, she wasn't on no gang banging shit like that. But she was in, she was in uh, the dream. You know what I'm saying? She couldn't even help him. She was in the hellish conditions, and she was agreeing with the demons. All right, but he said when he prayed to God, that's when he woke up. He said he prayed to God to get him up out of there, and that's when he woke up. And that's why I read Second Chronicles seven and fourteen. All right, so. Again, you know, I hope this made sense, you know, through the spirit and power of your high by Shimei Shai, and I hope and pray that it was edifying to the hopeful elect, giving all praise to your high by Shimei Shai once again, and we on to the next. Shalom.